Uh, so let's start. Actually, we need to uh, go a bit faster because we are consuming a bit more time on fundamental things, although those things will be elaborated more later. Uh, so in our last class, we started uh, classifying our system. And our system uh, can be stable or unstable that we discussed in the last class. The new system can have memory and it can be memoryless. Memory system means it can retain, uh, for example, something in it. Okay, like uh, in our case, okay. If we study something earlier, okay, we can have our output at the present time that will depend on the input of our uh, past as well as we can predict something for our future also. So a moving average system is there that is your uh, example of a system. Your memoryless system is something like this that if output will depend on the present input only like a, 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 okay if you want to have some example of this tip system for electrical cases you can uh, just some like what we call uh, an inductor or a capacitor okay the voltage across the inductor uh, not only depends on uh, the present issues or the present current or charge you are uh, giving to it it also depends on something stored in in, uh, in the past for the past input similarly induct is in the energy stored in the inductors is also depend on the initial current Initial current, sometimes you call that, for example, at time t equal to zero, you're applying some uh, current to it. But before that, your inductance may carry some amount of current that will also contribute to the energy storage of the inductor. Even, uh, for example, in your bank system, say you are depositing something, then uh, your deposit will be cumulatively added. So your previous, for example, input will also be borrowed uh, for the next year with the present input. We will discuss more about this thing later, okay? Now, uh, uh, the causality of a system, okay? That means your system can be causal or your system can be non-causal. Your causal system is actually uh, uh, something like this. A system is said to be causal if the present value of its output depends only on the present and past values, uh, but not on the future values. Actually, sometimes this type of system is called non-anticipatory type. Uh, but if we have a system, that system can predict or anticipate something, then we call it non-causal system. In the real time, a non-causal system cannot be implemented, actually. The reason is that non-causal system will need, need future input, but the system will never know what will be the input in future. The, so these things are there, uh, very simply described. Try to uh, have a look. We will be discussing this thing later in detail. Yes, now, sir. Okay. Now, invertibility, because we have to move a bit faster, uh, the reason is that more important topics are still left behind. Yes, sir. So, okay, so we will be discussing uh, uh, in more detail later, okay? But uh, you can go uh, through it by your own because these things are very simple. If you have your time, okay, your zero time, a, a, a time, uh, a, if you have a time axis at time t equal to zero or n equal to zero, this is your present in a stand. Then if you go uh, consider right hand side, this is your future. And if you consider left hand side, this is your past. In this sense, a time, for example, t is my, minus is your past and t plus is your future. Similarly, your minus values of n will uh, indicate the future, the uh, past and present uh, will be indicated by the plus values of n. In this way, way you can check uh, the definition of causality and memory. Now we have another system, it is called invertible type system. Invertible system means very simple, okay? If we have, uh, in most of our cases in communication are somewhat invertible type. That means the input that we are giving and at the output, we want to have the same output extracted from the uh, uh, receiving end. For this reason, ideally, we want that uh, the input that we have given at the input of a communication channel, we want to have this output exactly uh, received at the output end. So this can be an example of your uh, invertible system. But in terms of system operator, 
you know that uh, we have uh, described or discussed in the earlier class that generally we use H as an operator. So when an input is given to a system, it is being operated by H, then you will get an output, okay? So, so if we have a system, for example, with H operator there, this is your general operator, okay? It can have many, for example, uh, uh, characteristic depending which output we want. But generally, uh, it is represented in this way. So if we give an input X to a system with H, then we will have an output YT. Then if we want to get our XT back from YT, you need another system. Their system should operate in the reverse way. For this reason, your system is represented by, okay, with an operator, it is called HINB, inverse operator, okay? Yes. So, uh, so if we uh, move forward, then YT would be equal to uh, your YT is equal to what? Your YT, this is your YT actually. This is your YT. YT is out the output of your this system. So if H is operated on X, it will we will get Y. Then if Y is given as the input to HINB, then we will get our X back. So this is what the input output. Uh, relationship. So this thing must be equal to xt. If this is to be xt, then this quantity, okay, will have a nature is called i, which is called identity operator, okay. Like your uh, inverse matrix, if we multiply a matrix with this inverse, what we will get? A unitary matrix, isn't it? With element equal to 1. So this is what the thing, uh, uh, we'll uh, discuss the thing later in detail with reference to some uh, realistic example. So this is the invertibility of a system. A system is invertible, is these two concatenated operator resultantly will give you an identity operator. Yes, sir. Okay, so consider that this okay, whether this system is inverse or not okay you try to look at this thing you will understand it okay i am not discussing the thing is it is simple okay yes sir uh now from this point uh, you have to uh, uh concentrate a bit uh, uh, more intensively than previous cases okay because the whole thing that we'll be discussing in this course based on this property in general okay this is called time invariance Okay, we have our two properties or three properties already known to us in your earlier courses. Although we will discuss the thing there, along with this thing, we need this property of time invariance. Time invariance property means mathematically, for example, if we have a, a system that is time invariant, we are giving an input uh, X and we are getting an output say Y. So if your X is delayed, by an amount of time, then your output all will also be delayed by the same amount of time. So if this property is present in your uh, uh, system, then we call the system is time invariant. But in many of because the in many of our uh, uh, systems, uh, we need this property to express uh, or to represent the system mathematically otherwise it is a bit difficult okay one such example can be for example say you are giving a voice as an input of an amplifier and you see that your voice has a bandwidth frequency say 8 kilohertz for example then at your output you have to uh, have this frequency band at your output otherwise your voice will be distorted isn't it Yes, sir. In earlier days, when we used, for example, have you, uh, 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 did you have the experience of using tape recorder? Yes, sir. Okay, or uh, experience of playing, uh, for example, what you call uh, uh, record player? Yes, sir. So then you can see that if the speed of your uh, record player is not maintained, then what will happen? You will get your voice distorted, isn't it? Yes, sir. 
okay either your voice will be getting fast or it will be getting slower so what uh, problem is there then actually uh, the time uh, by some way or other the independent variable is uh, 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 scaled yes. or uh, as a result frequency is uh, uh, changing that's why this is this, this type of system will not be time invariant okay that's why your time invariance is actually that if we uh, give an input at a particular time we will get an output if we in delay the input the output will be delayed by the same amount of time in terms of operator this can be uh, uh, further uh, mathematically explained in general sense in this way for example say we have an input x1 t and what is that operator s t0 it is a shift operator isn't it the output of this operator will simply a shifted version of x1 t so uh, x2 t is this consider that x2 t is the output of uh, this uh, shift operator and that is equal to x1 t minus t0 then we are operating on it uh, h operator then we are getting an output okay the whole equation can be uh, written in this operator form that your y2 will be equal to operated on x1 t minus t0 and your x1 t minus t0 is shift operated on x1 so as a result uh, this uh, uh, equation can be written okay so this is what the input output relationship of your shift operator yes. now if we want to uh, for example go in the reverse way that we have our input given we simply interchange the position of h and s so then what will happen we will get an output yt isn't it that yt will not be a shifted version because as your x is not shifted y will y1 will also not shift it then when that y1 is uh, given as an input to the shift operator then it will be shifted by an amount equal to t0 okay if this output and the shifted version of your input output is same only when you can say that your system is time invariant so uh, this uh, the second system b in math in, in in operator form can be written in this way these two output y to t and this will be equal only when this equality will be valid that means h s t0 would be equal to s t0 h what does it mean it means that the position of your h and shift operator can be interchanged as a result the output will not be affected yes sir then we call it uh, uh, we call it time invariant. time invariant. Okay, if this situation is not maintained, then we call it time variant system. Okay. Yes, sir. Now this property, along with the property that we will be discussing there. Okay, you can have this example. You please read it out. It is simple, uh, easily understandable. Okay. Yes, sir. Now we will be discussing uh, this thing because all uh, properties, uh, all things are accommodated in a single slide. But as you are uh, uh, reading it very closely, you probably you can read it out. Can you read it? Yes, sir. The forms are very simple, but I will not uh, say that this is a new thing to you because you have known this thing from your earlier level. Probably I have uh, introduced you uh, about the idea of linearity in your first year. Can you remember? Yes, sir. Why are that linear property is applicable? Sir, in resistive circuits. Not only resistive circuit. In many, all in almost all the circuit linearity principle can be applied. Can anyone tell me where you have uh, applied for the property of linearity in your earlier levels? Uh, sir, when we use the ladder system, circuit. Ladder system is a simple example of linearity, but there are many other issues related to linearity that we referred in your first year. So this is the problem, okay? You, you all you quickly forget the basic thing so if you have uh, this thing with you, then nobody will, for example, teach you uh, the, those fundamental thing every day. Yes. It, it is very simple, okay? The linearity property where a proportionality, for example, is valid. 
but that proportionality not only depend on registers but it can also depend on inductor capacitor okay in which quantity you are considering that relationship will tell you that whether your system is linear or non-linear and you have uh, learned few network theorems in your first year and those network theorems are being successively used in your successive semester in many different ways for example Thevenin's theorem Norton's theorem, superposition theorems, all those theorems are uh, depends on the property of linearity. If your system is not linear, you cannot ap uh, apply, for example, those theorems in your network or any system analysis. Yes. Yeah. And that, 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 at that time, we discussed about two properties of linearity. One is called additivity property. Uh, another is called homogeneity property. Additivity property is very related to superposition, okay? For example, if your uh, input, if your system can take multiple inputs, okay, then for example, uh, your uh, problem A, if your system can take, uh, speaker A, if your system can take multiple input, then the output will have the contributions for each of your inputs. Then if, you, right. if your system is linear, then what you can do, you can consider the inputs individually, then calculate its contribution then the output will be the algebraic, oh. algebraic sum of all the contributions of your input okay that is what your superposition principle isn't it yes sir so if we just consider two things that we have an input x1 to the system output is y1 we have a system x2 output to y2 total output of your system will be y1 plus y2 but if we apply these two input consecutively to a system at a time then we also get an output uh, there, that two output must be same. That means if we calculate the contribution to the output for by the individual input and, and sum them together, sum means algebraic sum, then what will happen? We will get the total output. But if we apply all the input simultaneously and we will get an output, these two output must be same for your linear system. This is one of the requirements of your linear system. Another requirement is called homogeneity. Homogeneity means, uh, for example, if we scale our input, your output will also be scaled by the same amount. This is the, what you call proportionality behavior. For example, in a register, okay, if we consider that your register is not changing, uh, for example, uh, when you are applying a current, your resistance value is not changing. Then what will happen if we uh, apply one ampere current say if your resistance is 10 ohm it will give you 10 volt if we double your uh, current to 2 ampere your voltage will be 20 20 volt yes sir that, that means you you doubled your input your output is also getting doubled okay it this behavior is simply something like this okay if this is your input and this is your output then it will take a state for it will take the form of a state line that must go through the origin okay all state lines are not linear okay for example say okay let me again reiterate it because uh, this is very very important okay i will be going to whiteboard and discuss the thing okay yes sir For example, if we have an input output relationship, say this is your X, this is your Y, then what will happen? We are getting, for example, uh, we are getting an output input relationship, something like this. Okay, in your basic algebra, okay, or, or intermediate coordinate geometry, you have learned the, that this is equal to MX, isn't it? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So in this case, what will happen if we double, okay, say we are getting an input for uh, Y1 for an uh, input equal to X1. If we make an output Y2, that Y2 equal to say M into X2, where your X2 equal to 2 into X1, then it would be equal to 2 into M X1. Is it not equal to 2 into Y1? Yes, yes sir. That means you scaled your input, you doubled your input, your output will also doubled okay that means that this relationship if we scale our input by a factor m 
then your output will also be scaled by the same factor okay so then this this is called a scaling property or homogeneity so if we have a for example system h that system is taking and for example input say x uh, one t another input is say x two t then we are getting an output for example say y t that y t is equal to say y one t plus y two t okay this is your what property additive additivity property okay this is your additivity or superposition property now let us scale our input a by a factor a and scale our input b then the result and output yt will also be scaled in this way a into y1t plus b into y okay this equation involves both the properties okay additivity property and homogeneity homogeneity property okay if these two property are satisfied by a system we call it the system linear and if your system is linear and time invariant we call the system linear time invariant lti okay now from now on we will be discussing on or whatever system we are considering on based on that lti concept okay that means our system will be linear as well as time invariant so the if you want to apply this linearity and time invariant property with multiple input if this input is shifted this input is shifted by an amount that output yt will be also be shifted by the same amount of time so then we call it a linear time invariant now tell me uh, if i uh, uh, want to test you by a system say this system has an input xt we are getting an output yt that yt equal to say x at is it time invariant or time non non invariant so non invariant okay try to uh, judge it with the help of your text okay yes sir okay sir So yeah, I hope you can go through. Uh, yeah, are you there? Yes, sir. Then uh, didn't you learn about multipath system in your uh, communication engineering or wireless? Yes, For example, say if this is one station, this is. Uh, so consider that this is one station this is another station okay many objects are there buildings are there the vehicles are there something like this okay if you are communicating uh, uh, for example what will happen some signal can follow this direct path or other signal can be reflected in multiple objects yes, isn't it as a result what will happen at your output you will be getting many many signals okay coming from many different paths and how the, all those things will reach there at the same time? No, sir. It will be reaching at that time, different time, okay? So now tell me, if we have a multi-path, uh, for example, uh, system existing, what uh, effect will be there in the output? So there will be time shifting. There will be time shifting, but, but as a result, what will happen? So distorted operation. Of course, uh, distortion. What type of distortion will occur there? So it will be delayed. No, delayed means it is not a single signal. Okay, if we have a single path, you can say that even if a signal will follow thus this path, only one direct path, still it will be delayed because it will take a finite amount of time, amount of time to reach to receive receiver, isn't it? 
Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But, uh, but the, so delay will always be there. But as it is going in a multi path, this delay for each of the path will be different. So as a result, what will happen if we want to plot, for example, in time domain, this is very intuitive something, okay? If you want to plot it, consider that a signal, a pulse is going there uh, uh, for a direct, this is your direct path. Another pulse will be reaching there, for example, at a delayed time. Another pulse is reaching there for that delay. Another pulse is going for that delay. As a result, if we add them together in the time domain, what will happen? Your signal will be broadened in time domain. Yes, sir. So as a result, this is yes. The name of this distortion is delay distortion. Okay. So for this reason, what you need to do? You have to equalize. Uh, if you have when you receive, you have to equalize. For example, this distortion. This is not only this case. It will also cause some fading. Okay. That means your signal will uh, be uh, changing in a space in a very erratic way. And this, for example, modeling is not that much uh, easy, okay? We have very different models to uh, model the multipath communication, okay? There exists a standard empirical model for your wireless communication. This is very important topic uh, in your uh, electrical engineering, particularly for wireless communication, okay, or the multipath. So if you want to go multipath, multipath not only distorted, it will also uh, 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 increase the system loss. So this is a, a, an ideal system uh, where uh, if it is digital, then your system is discrete time. So in this way, you can uh, talk about your uh, multipath ways. So your MATLAB is the important issues that you have already uh, get into it. So I hope all the things that we have discussed so far can again be understood with the help of MATLAB. So this concludes our uh, simple, what we call introduction of signals and system, a very introductory information. But from now on, we will be applying this thing in our real system. So uh, we will be going to uh, chapter two of your book. Okay, before uh, going to go, uh, before going there, okay, let me uh talk about something the reason is that at your exam will be going online and uh, what i have learned so far okay it is not only you uh, the, 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 the the integrity and the uh, ethical value that we expect from our learners is so distorted and honest unaccepted that at one stage i advise the authority to postpone the exam but as many things are there, they cannot postpone. For this reason, uh, although you will practice many problems from this book, but none of the problem will be there in your uh, evaluation process exactly that you have to consider, okay? Yes, sir. But still you need to practice it to get accustomed to it, your uh, thing. Because if you are not uh, fair, then nobody can make you fair. Yes. The reason is that, okay, in many primary schools in Bangladesh, okay, they uh just set just to increase the uh, integrity or uh, uh, the behavior of the student they uh, in a, okay, many of the schools have some shop okay where no shopkeeper is there the students are going there taking their things and putting their money in a basket and giving back okay do you know this no sir no, sir that's so, all that school they are just implementing this thing in the schools okay but uh, unfortunately, we cannot implement this thing in our exam hall. So this is what our problem, okay? So in the online, uh, a few days ago, I was reading a newspaper, okay? And the uh, thing is there, uh, that how students are doing exam and teachers are taking exam, okay? Although many teachers, for example, they make it general, but this cannot be made general. The reason is that if a teacher is not uh, what you call uh, in, investing in time to pay, prepare his questions. He is taking some questions from the internet and posting it. Then they will, uh, students also uh, search the, the thing from the internet and they will also post their th thing. In our case, we when we take one to take, for example, our quiz, okay, you are taking the screenshot, sending it to your uh, peers and sharing the result. 
Uh, so try to, uh, for example, uh, understand that what ethical uh, what is the ethical consequences of this thing? Okay, this this will not be the only exam in your life. So, so be care, be careful about that. There is no any technology, okay, particularly in Bangladesh that can detect you. Only it can be detected if we have a less number of students. We will give a problem. We can search the whole world to solve this problem. But still, I will see that some will be copying. But then how can we move then? Okay, forget about it. If you cannot build our own integrity, nobody can uh, actually uh, do that. You are not the primary school guys. You are the people, okay, those who are also guiding someone. If your integrity will be of that level, then how you will guide others? So another issue is there actually, not only uh, this system, but we have our system that is electromechanical type and we can also, uh, uh, what do you call, uh, uh, make an analogous mechanical system if we have an electrical system with us. Have you learned this type of system in your control engineering? Yes, sir. Okay, fine. Then for this reason, I am not dealing with this thing. Okay? In earlier days, we used to give introduction about this electromechanical system also and give uh, analogy. As you have already con uh, attended this course, we will not be discussing this thing. But very, very interesting phenomena can be understood using this example. This is an example of a accelerometer. Okay, do you know that? What, what is that device? Yes, sir. Now yes, sir. Nowadays, this device is there in your mobile phone also. Yes, sir. Okay, in order to uh, just uh, locate your position in order to, uh, for example, uh, change the, uh, what do you call, any sense of motion, okay? If you want to detect that your accelerometer is not is needed, okay? This is simple model of accelerometer, okay? Mass is there, uh, uh, the, or the damping is there, and the spring is there, okay? If we uh, write the force balance equation in this mass, this is called, uh, uh, for example, uh, if, if with respect to this mass, you have to apply your uh, Newton's uh, second law, uh, uh, force balance equation like Kirchhoff's Volta's law, okay? Then a, if a displacement is occurring in this way, then you can easily write a differential equation that will balance, for example, this force. Then you will see that it will give you a second order differential equation and this is very similar to the equation of an RLC circuit. Isn't it? Yes, sir. Okay. Then this is what your equation, okay, 105. Then once that equation is available, you know how to solve it, okay? Then it is a secondary equation that that, that displacement uh, can have different properties in time domain, okay? It can be over damped type, it can be critically damped, it can be under damped, okay? Yes, sir. So see, in this way, you can investigate the nature of the output of your system. Yes, sir. So these are the examples of the system at the end of your book, uh, chapter, okay? You have a exhaustive list of the problems, okay? All these problems are related to uh, the thing that we have discussed so far, okay? Try to solve them and please get accustomed to it. Your, these are the MATLAB issues. <clears throat> you can take help of this program uh, just to get accustomed to it, how to apply uh, or use MATLAB in your learning. Okay, this will be dealing, uh, we, uh, this will be dealt with in your uh, lab course probably. Your lab is started? Yes, sir. Yes, okay. sir. Then you know this thing, okay. So uh, I, I advised you teacher also to just to follow this book. Uh, at least few examples are there in your MATLAB. You can uh, uh, try it just to get, and you can extend it on top of that. Okay, all these problems there are related to whatever we have discussed earlier. Okay, definition of your periodic signal, non-periodic one. Definition of our translation and, uh, and making a signal from other signals. In this connection, I need to uh, give you one uh, problem, I would say, to explore by your own. When we, uh, for example, examine the periodicity of a signal, then we consider a single term, either cosine, say omega t, omega zero t, or in the discrete domain, say cosine, say omega zero n, something like this. But you may have a signal, for example, combination of different cosines in both in your 
uh, uh, continuous time cases and for your discrete time cases, more cosine terms can be or sine terms can be added there. Okay. Yes, sir. So if more, more cosine and sine terms will be added there, you will get a resulting signal. So if we have a, okay, you note it down. If we have a, a signal that is prepared from the addition and subtraction of many, for example, cosine and sine signals, then how to test the periodicity and find the period of the resulting signal, okay? That you have to explore by your own with the help of your book, okay? Yes, sir. So you understand the problem? That if we have a signal, that signal is prepared by adding one or more similar type of signals in it with it, okay? Then you have to test that whether this addition will make the resultant signal periodic or non-periodic. If periodic, then how to find the period of the composite signal, okay? Yes, sir. That you have to explore. So, so with this thing, let us uh, go to our second chapter. Second chapter is very interesting and many of the, uh, the first thing probably, not many, we have discussed there, okay? This is very simple, although your figures are looking complicated, but uh, your problems are very tiny and simple type. And most of the things are related to uh, the electrical examples are already with you from your first year. Okay, you can write the equations for your voltage, current, etc. solve them and something like this. Okay, so your next uh, in accordance line that we have uh, given to you. Okay, we uh, up to now we covered our uh, first objective that is what our basics in signals and system and their uh, time domain uh, or, or, or mathematical representation. Now we have to discuss a bit higher topic that will uh, be going to a next cognitive level, level of understanding that how to apply this basic that we have learned earlier just to uh, uh, apply to a, a system, okay? That means we are gradually going to a higher cognitive level of applications. So, so let us start with uh, that uh, the thing. Okay, as you know that I, I am going to slide, but before going to that, just uh, we can have a look uh, at the introduction of this chapter okay the thing is time uh, domain representation of lti system okay that means when we refer this thing in this way that it is the time domain representation then there must be then other domain representation isn't it yes sir okay the, so in your uh, course plan you can easily say that the higher level of learning where we apply transform technique, okay, transform methods. Transform methods, okay. Your transform methods is actually trans sometimes we call transform domain. You have already learned two transform uh, mathematics. One is Fourier. Another is? Laplace. So, your LTI system can also be represented by this transform domain, okay? Yes, sir. So, uh, your time domain will continue up to the third chapter. Uh, uh, not only third, probably in this chapter because this is a very big chapter, okay? That covers both your uh, discrete time and continuous time. And in your other text, it might uh, cover one or two chapters, okay? But the topics are same. So, so uh, we, have, we have already defined our linear time invariant system. Then we have to move further, how to represent the thing in time domain for your continuous time case and for your discrete time case, okay? In order to uh, move further, we have to uh, apply the basics that you have learned earlier. In this book, we will be moving in accordance with the presentation of this book, okay? So, so we'll be dealing with discrete time signal first. Then we'll be going to continuous time system, okay? Our first topic will be uh, article 2.2, the convolution sum, okay? What is it? Uh, we will be discussing uh, uh, gradually. Uh, uh, let us start from our slide, okay? 
Yes, sir. Okay, let me uh, find the slide first because I am taking few minutes. Okay. Can you see it? Yes, sir. Okay, only 39 students joined, although we are in the class, okay? So I will be giving you percentage now, okay? If anyone will be entering there, I will not give his percentage. So, so I am getting the uh, screenshot of your participant list and no student will be allowed to enter further. Okay, respond 35. Yes, sir. Nine. Yes, sir. Roll number nine. Yes, sir. Thirteen. Yes, sir. <clears throat> okay, from the next day, I will be taking your percentage within the 10 minutes and if anyone left, then the whole percentage will be cancelled. 33. Yes, sir. 34. Yes, sir. Okay. For for the time being, we stop your recording, then again restart, okay? For the sequences of your vision engagement and, for example, misdeed will be the, you are the only bearer of this thing, okay? Okay, uh, Niloy, nice to see you. You please put your uh, uh, camera off, okay? <laughs> Uh, so we will be starting our second chapter. Okay, you can start recording. Yes, sir. Uh, so you recorded what I have talked earlier also. Yes, sir. Why? Because yes, when I, I was in record, sir. Yeah. Attendance, I did not record, sir. I paused. Okay. So time to make representation. Okay. Another issue is that some complaints are coming uh, from many different sides regarding cyber bullying or cyber, uh, for example, some misbehavior. Do not, for example, do this thing. If you are caught by any form or any reason, it will be a severe consequences for you. So try to be very careful about that. When you are communicating with your friends, with your teachers, something like this, okay? Yes, sir. Because, uh, you know, uh, as we are very much dependent on technology, if someone will abuse it, then you can easily imagine that what will be the uh, effect of this thing. So, uh, Nila, you put your camera off. Okay, so our time domain system representation from this point ahead. Okay, what is the topic actually? Let us start with. So these are the things we will be uh, considering in our case. And among those, okay, if you examine this list, you can easily identify that this thing, probably you have some experience in using this thing. 
a state variable description have you learned it in your control system um, not yet sir your control system is started this semester yes sir or it is it, 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 it is completed in the last sir we will start we started this semester sir your control engineering started from this semester yes sir okay inshallah you will be having some introduction about it okay so these are the things that inshallah we will cover cover in this chapter so uh, let us proceed uh, further oh, why it is blank nothing is there uh one important thing that i need to discuss okay no problem uh, okay in your book uh, uh, those things are there in the different form but you can easily understand this figure also look i have already discussed that thing earlier in your uh, first chapter okay for example any discrete sequence x n and with the help of our impulse function we defined our impulse function in the discrete domains in this way isn't it yes sir then what will happen our xn can be actually uh, uh, described with the help of our del n delta n okay for example consider uh, in the, okay if we just uh, go to the uh, topmost figure in this case you see that say we have a signal at n equal to to this one okay this is your this signal it has some magnitude maybe uh, less than one maybe greater than one or whatever it may be but if we multiply this signal with an impulse at that position say that impulse is at that position this can be say delta say uh, at minus two it will be delta n plus two isn't it yes sir then if we multiply this delta n by two with this signal will the signal change signal will be remain same okay at the same position so your x minus 2 that means if we multiply for example figure a with this figure uh, your delta is there at uh, n equal to minus 2 then we are picking for example the signal at n equal to minus 2 out in this way yes. then this this will be the value of your signal and that will not change the amplitude of your signal it will be a self-explanatory type that will tell you that we have a signal equal to x minus 2 at n equal to minus 2. Similarly, n equal to minus 1 signal can be expressed in this way. Forget up because we are using the uh, what you call only the uh, uh, general representation of your signal amplitude. It can be plus, minus, whatever it may be. Okay. Similarly, a signal at n equal to 0 can be this. A signal at n equal to 1 can be this. A signal at n equal to 2 can be this. Okay. Now, if we add, for example, all this figure together, what will happen? You can generate this figure, isn't it? Yes, sir. Similarly, if we add all these equations together, then what will happen? You will get a sum, isn't it? Yes, sir. And that sum can be expressed in this way that we discussed earlier. That sum xn would be equal to, say, k equal minus infinity to infinity. Uh, it will be equal to xk into delta n minus k, isn't it? Yes, sir. So, so any signal can be expressed as a weighted sum of impulses, okay, for the case of discrete time signal. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Okay. Then if this is the case, then, okay, before going to the next slide, just let me discuss something uh, intuitively okay okay that okay if we consider that our xn is an input our xn as an input the if xn is an input then that xn is split up into many inputs isn't it yes sir yes sir one is at n equal to minus two another is at n equal to minus one another is at n equal to zero and so on so if of these stems are actually the components of your input, the total input Xn can be constituted with the help of those inputs. So if we can find, if we have a system, for example, say, if we have a system, uh, 
uh, that system has, for example, say we have a system, where is the implementation? If we have a system A, A, this is used A, we are giving an input Xn there. We are getting an output say Yn, isn't it? Yes. Now we have splitted our Xn into a sum, K equal to minus infinity to infinity Xk into delta N minus K, isn't it? Yes, yes sir. Then your Yn would be equal to what? Your Yn would be a sum like this, for, for example, for each value of your input, you will get an output, isn't it? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. For example, for instance, if we give this input, we will get an output. If we give that input, you will get an output. For If we give this input, you will get an output. You give this input, output, output. So if we sum all the, if your system is linear, then you can, uh, superposition is applicable. So you can uh, add all the outputs together to find your total output, isn't it? Yes, sir. sir. Then two properties will be uh, valid then. Your system must be LTI, otherwise you cannot do that, okay? LTI, if it is LTI, it must be linear. So, so superposition principle is valid. We can consider individual input and calculate their output number one. Second thing is another property of linearity is that hom uh, homogeneity property will be there. Okay, the reason is that as we know that the amplitude of each of the input is different, isn't it? Yes, sir. Then uh, that amplitude is appearing as a scale factor, X, a blue, 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 blues are the scale factors of your uh, uh, red, red are the delta, isn't it? Yes, sir. So, so if we find, for example, the input delta, if we give an input delta and say we are getting an output, say HN, say, say, then instead of delta, if we multiply it by x0, what change will be there at the output? Your output will, 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 your, uh, output will also be multiplied by x0, isn't it? Yes, sir. That's so now, how about the other inputs? Other inputs are nothing but the scale then delayed or advanced version of your delta, isn't it? Yes, sir. That's in this case, what will happen? You, if we give an input say at n plus one, then what will happen? Your output will be also be delayed or advanced by the same time unit? Yes, sir. And a scale by this factor? Yes, sir. So in this way, you can consider that each of your, if this input can be used as a seed, what is, what is that input? Delta n. Delta n can be used as a seed value then with the help of this seed value, all other uh, 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 stems can be considered or input values can be considered. Then we will have a out total output there, okay? So this is the concept of calculating the output of a discrete time LTI system, okay? Okay, the logic is very simple. What you need to do first step is, you have to express your input as a weighted sum of impulses, okay? Then you calculate the response of your system for an impulse located at the origin. Then use this response as a seed value to proceed further, okay? Let me uh, uh, discuss about it. Okay, this is what we have already discussed, didn't we? Yes, sir. Okay, we have already derived this equation, okay? Now uh, you see that your shifting and superposition properties will be applicable there in your LTI, okay. Now these things are already uh, discussed there, okay. Uh, your figures are a bit uh, not easy. Okay, you take uh, the help of your book to read it out. Let me share uh, your whiteboard just to uh, give some discussion about this thing, okay. Okay. Our logic is what, for example, if we have a system, we are giving an input first, say, a delta n. Then we will be getting an output hn. Okay? This output is called impulse response of our system. How to find it? It depends on the 
nature of your system. Okay, RES, FON, okay, UNAC response of the system. And uh, why would we uh, we are calling it impulse response because we are giving an impulse and calculating the output. So we are calling it impulse response. Your delta n is located at here. Okay, this is your n. This is your delta n. If your delta n is located at n equal to zero. Now consider that we have an input there. That in this is your n equal to zero. This is n equal to zero. Say this is n equal to one. This is n equal to two. This is your n. Okay. Consider that we have an input there. We have an input there. We have an input there. This value is x zero. This value is x one. This value is x two. We you know that that value can be expressed as x zero delta n. This value can be expressed as x one. Delta n minus one, isn't it? Yes, sir. This value can be expressed as x two delta n minus two. Now let us consider these three samples only. Okay, then you can extend your thing by using the example of your book. You do it by your own if you understand this thing easily. Okay. Now if we want to take the okay, consider that that input x n is has three in the uh, three component inputs. One is At n equal to zero, another is at n equal to one, another is at n equal to two. Now, if we have, for example, our this uh, input-output relationship known, then if we want to calculate the output for x zero delta n, what will be the output corresponding output? Oh, it will be it, it will be equal to x zero. Into delta, uh, no, 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 x zero into h n, isn't it? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Because this is your LTI system. So, so here in this case, only the difference is that your signal is at the same position, but it is a scale by an amount x zero. So your output will also be x x uh, uh, scale. Now your input is say x one, delta n minus one. First thing is that your output will be excel uh, scale by the same factor x n, isn't isn't it? Yes, sir. Then your output will be delayed by the same uh, number of samples, isn't it? Yes, sir. Is it is it clear? Yes, sir. Okay. So if we uh, consider that we have a signal at n equal to two delta n minus two, corresponding output will be equal to x what x two. H n minus two. N minus two. Good. In the same way, if we consider that we are we are in a kth position signal, then this is represented by n minus k. Then your output will be equal to what? X k. H n minus k. Isn't it? Yes, sir. So, so if we just then write our output in this way, can we do that? Sum x k into h n minus k, and for k equal to say minus infinity to infinity, can we do that? Yes, sir. Then this will become the output of a sequence x k if the impulse response is known to you. So, so in order to apply this thing, use Your seed quantity is the impulse response. Okay, you got the point. Yes, sir. So this is what the starting point of your uh, LTI system analysis in LTI discrete domain. So if the impulse response of our system is known to us, then that impulse response can be used to calculate the output of an LTI discrete time system for any arbitrary input sequence. Okay. Or x n is our arbitrary specific. This sum should be carried out in different ways. You consider that we have our two variables there. One is n, the global variable. Okay, this is your global variable, global independent variable. And we have our local variable there k. Okay. Yes, sir. Do you know the concept of local and global declaration in your programming language? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
okay you can have a sub program for example that sub program may be called or a function may be called within another function then some variable defined within the function are the local variables and some variables that will be used throughout your text are the global variable variable okay you have to define them clearly now how to proceed with this can be thought as a nested uh, loop do you know what is nested loop yes sir yes sir loop inside loop uh, yes nested okay that means loop yes, loop inside a loop so this sum is actually a nested sum the reason is that for example for each value of n you have to carry out this sum okay because if you want to calculate the output then you have to calculate your output and plot it y n okay for each value of n say n equal to 0 you have to calculate this sum for n equal to 1 you have to calculate this sum for n equal to 2 you have to calculate this sum in this way you will have an output there plotted okay yeah. how to calculate this sum we will be discussing in great detail later okay this sum is called convolution sum that you have uh, seen at the title of your book article 2.2 is that clear? Yes, sir. These things are very simple. And you see that simple intuitive technique has been used to uh, uh, derive this relationship. Yes, sir. OK, all the thing that is there in your slide, I have already discussed, OK? I hope you'll understand the thing. So we arrived in this blue equation at the end, OK? this equation. So, so this is called convolution sum. And usually that symbol is used to express the convolution operation. Okay. So, so uh, when we have our, uh, we say that if the impulse response HN of a system is known to us, then for any arbitrary input sequence XN, then our output YN will be equal to convolution of XN with HN. Okay that is expressed by this sum. Convolution operation is commutative type. If we change the position of convolution, it will not change, okay. Now my next question to you is, have you heard about convolution earlier? Yes, sir. Where? Sir, Laplace. Laplace stands from, that's good. Okay, you see that convolution operation is actually useful in Laplace taking Laplace inverse, okay? Yes, sir. You see that if you have a complicated function the, whose inverse cannot be taken so easily, you can split, for example, the function by partial difference, partial fraction. Then individual uh, function uh, can be inverted. Then your total inversion will be equal to convolution, isn't it? You can convolute more many functions together and your convolution operation is uh, this type. Okay, either you can change the position of your variable in convolution, uh, functions in your convolution, okay? Yes, sir. So this is your discrete convolution, but probably in your uh, Laplace, you did not deal with discrete, you dealt with- Continuous. Continuous, and in that case, that in summation was not there. It was uh, what an integral, isn't it? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Very good. So, so you know this thing, and we also we will also use uh, in uh, continuous convolution in our case. So you see that that operation, mathematical operation, how is it related to a real uh, system operation? Okay. Yes, sir. So this is what the only objective of this book uh, course. Okay. Yes, sir. So, so this example is illustrated uh, in your book. Okay. Try to uh, verify it. Okay. Your input is there. How many samples are there in your input? Your XN has one, two, three, four samples, and your uh, impulse response is also there. So, so uh, what you need to do just to evaluate the sum that we discussed earlier, okay? But you see that uh, this sum is very simple, but it is actually a lengthy process. The reason is that if the number of sample is huge, then this uh, uh, procedure will not be uh, efficient. The reason is that uh, it, for your hand calculation, it will be difficult. For this reason, in order to uh, evaluate your uh, convolution integral, we uh, sum, we need to have some close form or some shortcut technique, okay? We will be dealing with this thing. So uh, what you verify it, okay? Like just uh, our previous general example. 
your samples of k is expressed in the uh, left figures okay this is your uh, first input this uh, this is your uh, this is your first input this is your second this is your third this is your fourth this uh, something like this. if we add all these together you will have an input this then each of your individual input will give you the output by using impulse response you can shift them and scale them then you can easily find the individual output you add all these figures together then you will get a figure okay that adding will not give you a single value because convolution sum uh, only uh, if some values will be coinciding they will be added together but the non uh, uh, coinciding value will be appearing as the value of n so, so for each value of n you will have a value that can be obtained from all these four figures together you got the point how to draw this figure yes, for sir. example for n equal to zero you look at this figure no value is there no value is there uh, we have a value half there and we have a value minus one there so at this point the value will be equal to minus half this is your uh, minus half or one okay verify it because this value is also half minus half so see in this way you can easily you go to your next position one at one no signal one one and uh, this is your one probably we have another figure up so in this way you can uh, calculate the total output due to that input okay please verify it so that's it from my part today okay yes sir so, so by the way uh, how sir. about your uh, uh, lms yes sir it was good but but only 130 student joined the uh, other did not join what, what was the reason okay this is section b isn't it yes yes sir uh, you cr is there yes sir i'm here okay can you afford uh, a couple of minutes uh yes sir sir can i call you personally sir why you need personal uh, communication with me uh, 